Welcome to the newest indoor adventure in the Four Keeps Dissolution. Steven, Part Steven. Three. Yes. Can you can you swap me and Connor? Yes, I can. Shazam, it is done. Today is October 25th, 2021, and you are loved. And that is a very important thing that we like to remind each and every single one of our viewers and listeners at the beginning of each and every single one of these games. If this is your first time joining us, you can go to youtube.com slash indoor adventures to check up on all of the VODs of each of the games that you, we have played up until this point, or you can go towards where anywhere audio casts are made available for free. You can find us there under the same moniker. And speaking of things that are being made available for free, if you go to patreon.com slash indoor adventures, you can check up on our after show called Nights in the Courtyard, where we answer questions not only from the community, but also from each other. So if you have any questions for myself or any of these other fine folk, feel free to join us on that Discord. Uh, the link can be found in the description of this video or audio cast down below, or I do on occasion post it in the Twitch chat to the side. So... Be sure to tune in, check that out when we go live at 5.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on Mondays for this show. But let's say you already support us on Twitch. You already support us on Twitter and YouTube and all of those other wonderful places. And you're trying to think to yourself, where can I go to help support this fantastic show even more? Guess what, buddy? I got your back. Quite literally, in fact, because if you go to indooradventure.redbubble.com, we got t-shirts, we got posters, we got mugs, we got crop tops, throw pillows, aprons, shower curtains, clocks. And most importantly, we also got Tia masks. That's right. We have face masks with the symbol of Tiamat upon them, designed by our very own Cyberwolf1201, where all of the proceeds of those masks end up going to help support Doctors Without Borders. So if you would like to help support a good cause or possibly help support the show, you can again go to indooradventure.redbubble.com. That is indoor adventure no s at the end dot redbubble.com but that is it for my opening spiel so hey rj who are you playing today hey everybody i'm rj today i'm playing Kalem, the shatterkai wizard we both go by he him hello everybody i'm lb hack up and i'm playing gwen the halfling barbarian fighter we both go by she her hoi i'm cyber i use he or whatever pronouns uh i play arjon arjon is a and I don't know if this is going to change after tonight because a cool dragon book is coming out and I might get bored. Uh, he's a dra dra draconian dragonborn ranger cleric who uses he him. Hey everybody, I'm Wings, also known as Danae Keener. She, her, I'm playing as Coriander, the Eldrin Paladin, who uses she, they, or he pronouns. And I am the indoor adventurer, he, him, and I drank too much coffee before this game. So... Last we left off, uh, obviously, we all remember the baby, but that was two weeks ago. Last week, we were all stuck inside the Shadowfell. At the start of our session, our four, uh, our four main cast were actually separated. Uh, Calum being near a Feywild carnival, Corey meeting up with a... a rather inconspicuous hag named Abuela Plume. Arjan, you ended up meeting an individual named Pike, which, uh, fuck that guy, I'm, we're gonna fly away from him, we don't need to worry about him right now, just, no, 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 no. Uh, and Gwen, you met a, uh, rather grim individual named Standing Grave. It was at that point, Gwen, that you received a protective tattoo from this, uh, from this Goliath that you had met, uh, and in doing so found that there was a little bit of a more uh, kind of a dark brooding presence in your Goliath conclave that you have uh, as part of your spirit guides. Um, it was at that point that there was much discussion to be had as to whether or not we were meeting at the carnival, we were meeting at the lake, we were meeting at the castle, we figured it out in the end and all met up by the lake. It was at that point that you decided that you were going to head off into the woods on in yeah, towards the direction of the castle that Arjan had seen while flying above the uh while flying above the Shadowfell or at least like the general landscape. However, once you were actually inside of that uh inside of those woods, it became a little bit more apparent to the rest of you that not all was well in uh with Gwen or Arjan as it seemed like there were there's something about this land that is affecting them in a more negative sense. Mostly with Gwen being very certain that not only her but all of you were going to be dying in this place. 
as you continued making your way, you started noticing that there were a set of about eight ravens that seemed to be perched particularly on top of these ancient pine trees. As they began to look down and you continued making your way through this path, my video is cut out and being weird for a little bit. It fixed itself. That's great. Uh, one of these ravens swooped down, and as it leveled out and came towards your group, you watched as it shifted from this raven form into the form of a Shadar Kai, and, uh, a kind of pallid-looking elf, very similar to Kalem, although rather than Kalem wearing an owl mask, this one wore a raven's mask made of ivory and held in its hand a wicked chain that it seemed to have wrapped around its fist coming towards your group. I would like for everybody to roll initiative. Let's go, champ. Ten. A ten? Fourteen. Look at me. Two. I rolled a two. I got a 17. Must be nice to have positive in initiative. Just the one, though. Just the one. Same. Same. I was I just very surprised at the two on Arjan's end. But that's okay. So, at the top of the initiative order is the individual with the chain. Now, as we lay out the scene... We had established previously, last session, that Arjan and Kalem were the two that were in front. Corey and Gwen were the two that were in the back as Corey was trying to help Gwen not feel as though they were going to die here, but realized, ah, like, this is a brick wall situation. Like, Gwen has it in her mind that this is the case. I'll just let her have this one. Whether that's to your advantage or not is remains to be seen. However... At the start of the round, uh, one of the uh, two more of these ravens fly down. One of them is actually going to be uh, one of them is actually going to stay up in the tree, and you watch as they shift into uh, into this kind of like again a shadar kai, but they seem not to have like a chain in their arm, but they have what looks like a wicked looking effigy and then a knife in the other and with this wicked looking effigy and knife they cut open their palm grab a hold of their effigy and then squeeze as this small contraption of loose grasses and branches seems to dig into their palm as the blood continues to pour out and they are going to be casting a spell oh uh at this point um, ba, ba, ba. the mage slayers want to know how close we are. <laughs> the mage slayers are in the back. The dude casting the spell is up in a tree. Cool, cool. Yes, yes, yes. But I've got other things. So, so I can interrupt you later. <laughs> that is correct. Uh, Gwen, I need you to make a wisdom saving throw for me. Uh, counter at spell at fourth level. <laughs> okay, counter spell at fourth level. That is perfectly fine uh, with this Thank individual. You. Uh, as you counterspell, you see this raven-headed mask as they, like, squeeze the blood out and then turn it towards Gwen. Just, kind of, like, crock their head in that very, like, bird, like, looking at you, one eye, one eye. As they seem to be a little bit more wary of you now. Uh, next up is the individual that was coming towards you, uh, Arjan and Kalem, with the chains. Uh, and they are going to lash out at you, Kalem. Uh, so they are going to try and do a thing, which is always helpful. So I am guessing that a 12 does not hit, though. Does not. Does 16. The... Sorry, hold on. For some reason, all of my stuff is unequipped. So my AC is 9 right now. Give me a second. That's, that's happened to a lot of people. Did you uh, have it in your bags? No. Oh. They were uh, part of my equipment. Gotcha. Uh, yes, a 16 will hit. Okay. Minus two. A 16 hits. Okay, so then with that 16, you are going to be taking 10 points of piercing damage, and then I need you to make a dexterity saving throw. Oh, boy. I'm good at these. 
zero. A zero. Excellent. So with that, you are knocked prone as this chain whips out, wraps around one of your legs, and just pulls. Uh, so you are you have disadvantage on attack rolls. Attack rolls uh, against you have advantage as long as they are within five feet. Uh, and then with their third whipping attack towards you uh, with these chains, uh, they are going to make a 19 on their attack. Hit. Yep. Hits. Okay. <clears throat> Sounds good. And then that is going to be for eight points of piercing damage. And then I need you to make another dexterity saving throw. Five. Five? Okay, you are going to be taking an additional 20 points of necrotic damage. Quite close enough for him to have aura benefits. Uh, yes, but I don't think that that would... That's not I'm rolling enough. so low oh, that it's not that. got a that's zero. Just, that's just paladin stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because okay. your aura, at this point, isn't your aura out to 30 feet? Oh, good question. Um, or is it still the 10 feet? I can't remember if it's 18 or 17 that you get that uh, that you get the bubble increase. You know what? Uh, probably not. It's probably still 10. I'll let you know. Okay. Sounds good. So this individual has, again, wrapped Calum with his chains, flung down, and then with the other arm, more chains come out and just laid upon. Then the third individual that was at the top of the initiative order is going to come down uh, from uh, in their raven form, land on the ground as well. And they, you see, begin to twist their hands in this very... One could not describe it as comfortable in any sense of the word. It's almost like when you see somebody show you how double-jointed they are in their fingers. Like, it is just like you see them like kind of like ridge up in these arcane symbols as they are going to cast a spell. So with that, let me see. Okay, so they are going to be making a ranged spell attack. This is an 11 to hit you, Arjan. No. Okay, so you see these like, again, like, these fingers that seem to just be like fo like posing themselves in a very non-conforming way sh uh, create this arc of lightning that seems to cackle more than it does crackle as they shoot that towards you and you just like mm -mm, no thank you and dodge very uh very easily out of the way on this one next up in the initiative order is Corey. Hello. Corey, there are five of the ravens that are still tucked up in the trees. There are three. Uh, one of the Shadarkai is also in the trees. Two of them are on the ground. One with their fingers outstretched that just shot a ball, a, a bit of lightning towards Arjan, and the other seems to be engaged with Kalem with their chains out. All right. Um, I'm going to face step up into the tree uh, with that fellow with the effigy. Okay. Poof. Um, I've got uh, Ironwood Defense up now, and I will take a couple attacks. Okay. Oh, you know what? I moved to that over here, didn't I? Hiya! Um, that's a 15 to hit. Uh, 15 just hits. All right, that's going to be... 16 slashing damage, and okay. I think I'll lay a second level smite on this. Um, so that will be 17 plus 4, 21 radiant damage on that attack. Here comes attack the second. Uh, 14 probably doesn't hit that. A 14 just misses. All right, that's... Bonus two attacks. That's it for me. I'm going to stay up here in this tree with this fella. Okay, sounds good. And Corey, as you are next to this creature, you can feel the... And, and you're not sure if this is because of the creature itself. You're not sure if this is because of your connection with Elvenkind at this point. But there is a 
weight that seems to exist from this creature. The goth ant, thank you so much for the raid. The creature that you stand next to, it's almost as if their presence is a source of entropy in and of itself. Hmm. Then next up, one of these ravens uh, within the trees as well, you see shift into, uh, they have a spear along their back. Their sleeves have been kind of rolled up. Uh, same thing, they all seem to have like these ivory raven masks on and it levels its arms out um and let me see what it is going to do so that seems fun so gwen i need you <laughs> oh, to boy. make a wisdom save I can do this, guys. I can do this. When I pull up the right... Why do I have four windows open right now? Okay, here we go. Wisdom save. Am I in Corey's bubble? Nope, Corey bamfed away from you. Bye. It's a four! A, it's a four? four? Excellent. So, Gwen, oh, boy. as you are... Wait, wait, is this a spell? It is. Does that mean I get advantage? Because I, I know, does it? Slay? Wait, hold on, Only hold when on. They're within five feet of you. Ah, fuck. Okay. okay go on. So, Gwen. Yes. As you are looking at this creature and they stare at you, you see that they're they also like strike this pose against you, and you see that their hands just sort of like lock up towards you, but then you see their head sort of like cocking back and forth as they look at you, almost in the same way a bird does. But then you see that tilt to the side. And the head just keeps going and going almost like an owl's would in this strange, like clockwise circular motion. You think you can almost hear it's either bones breaking or what you really hope is branches. Either way, you're not sure what the fuck is going on with that. And that sense that you are going to die is almost overwhelming in this moment. And as you look around, you see that the color fades away from Cory, the color fades away from Arjan, the color fades away from Calum, and each one seems to turn almost towards you like a shadow of themselves, each with this raven mask on as you suffer the effects of a confusion spell. Ah! <laughs> ah! All right, next up, Gwen. All right, so Gwen, at the yeah, start... Yeah, tell me about what a confusion spell a confusion does to me. spell is... So, at the start of your turn, roll a d10 for me. A uh, d10? Roll a d10. Okay. All right, D&D Beyond, don't fuck me. Hopefully you get the one where you either babble incoherently or don't attack a teammate. It's a nine! A nine? You can act and move normally. Oh, thank God. Uh... Oh, sorry, I forgot the, <laughs> the dice I have make a sound when they go away. <laughs> um, <laughs> got very confused. Um, okay. Um, uh, oh God, I, acting normally, but in this scenario uh, <laughs> where my friends are, uh, oh. Um, you at least, like, you can get the sense that there's some magic bullshit going okay, on. Okay, okay, like, okay. It's not like, this is, that was more of just flavor. Yeah. It's not a mechanical yeah. thing. Yeah, You're fine. Um, Although there's I the think, confusion spell. Yeah. So I think what Gwen does is she is going to rage because uh, that's what she does. And, I, and I've decided that this, this condition that she has while in the shadow fell when she's raging is fuck it we're gonna die i'm going out fighting so she's gonna go all the fuck in uh who's the closest person to her the closest individual to you is going to be this raven masked individual that currently has mm -hmm. calum wrapped in chains okay i'm going to go attack him okay with the run tax okay uh i'm gonna do make take my two attacks the first one is a 29 That'll hit. The second, the second one is a 26. Too high. 
Okay. Yeah, you're fine. Uh, the first one does 29 damage. Okay, hold Do on. Do I need let to? Me, oh. uh, let me get all of this written out. So sure, sure. that way Do I you can need... track it. Do you need slashing versus fire? Um, I don't believe that I do. Let me check. Okay. No, mm -hmm. you're fine. Okay. All right. So, so the first one's 20, 29 damage. 29. The second one is 23 damage. Okay. And then because I'm like, fuck it, let's go, I'm going to uh, action surge against this creature. Okay. Uh, and I'm going to attack two more times. Okay. Uh, the first one is a 20, non-natural. Okay, that'll still hit. And a 17. Oh, a 17 oh, also would hit. What's damage for the All first right. one? 27. All right. So I'm going to stop you there before your second attack goes through. Uh, mm -hmm. Because they currently are showing negative eight hit points uh, on, uh, on my HP tracker. So mm -hmm. you can save that second attack okay. as you would. Um, so first attack, uh, that, like, first, second, like, they, like, there is no time for this individual to even register, like, they register mm -hmm. the first axe strike when the second yeah. and third come through. As they do, you see, like, these axe slashes have, like, cut in and cauterized these wounds, so mm -hmm. they aren't, like, just, like, anime spraying blood everywhere. It's, yeah. It's very closed, but you see them sort of, like, stagger back a little bit, chains still in their arms, but their body becomes, like, it's like they're shrinking. Like, ev like the their actual essence is getting, like, drained away from their muscle tissue until they are just bones. Like, mm -hmm. they're, like shrinking like they're getting dehydrated and the chains fall off and the individual like staggers backwards and falls and as they fall they just seem to turn into this almost blackish smoke and then before oh. they even hit the ground they are no longer there and this smoke just rises okay so this i have the, one this was the fellow with the chains that was attacking. yep this was the okay. fellow with the chains um, I will say, Calum, you've seen Gwen rage. Uh, this is, the, like, she's never, like, she recklessly attacks, but this is, like, just chaos. She is just pure emotion in this point, and she is just going for it. Um, do I have enough movement to get to somebody else with my second attack? Um, my fourth attack? Yes. I would okay. say that you do there because one of the individuals that did not target you with their like with their ooky fingers mm -hmm. uh, was standing off to the back. That would be like within range for you to just like run up and beat the shit out of. Okay, so uh, it does a seventeen hit them. A seventeen. Let me check, but I believe yes, it does. Seventeen just hits. Okay, so that would be the twenty-seven damage okay. that Sounds I rolled previously. Good. Um, yeah. And I think that's my turn. Okay. Sounds good. At the end of your turn, make a wisdom saving throw. 13. 13. Okay. So you are still under the effects of the confusion. Uh, yes. To save out of it. Nothing new is happening yet. It's fine. Uh, so that was Gwen's turn. Arjan. How uh, many dudes are left? So you see that there are... There is the the arcane-looking uh, individual that is on the ground. There is another arcane individual up in a tree. One with an effigy that had cut their hand bleeding in a tree. And besides that, you see what look to be four other ravens that are all perched that look like they are possibly waiting for something. Maybe it's their turn. Maybe it's not. Who knows? Uh, am I getting any... My question would have been, am I getting any sort of read off of any of these people? But I don't trust people right now. So I'm shooting. Yeah, they don't look like they're here for... Uh, they don't look like they're here for picnics. So I'm gonna I'm gonna shoot the uh 
creepy effigy guy. Okay. And that guy is right next to Corey, if that helps. Uh, 29 to hit. That'll hit. I would like to mark them as my favorite foe. Okay. Uh, uh, so I will be able to get 1d8 additional on this. Uh, 11 plus... Eight, so 19. Okay. Uh, I would like to shoot him again. Bam, bam. Uh, for a 27 to hit. Yeah, that'll do her. For 12 points. Okay. Uh, and because this is my first turn and I get Dread Ambusher, uh, I will do an additional thing and also get a 1d8 on this. Yay, yay. Uh, 33 to hit. <laughs> yes. That's a number. Is For 10 points. Is that the highest two hit that we've had? You said 11 damage? Uh, 10. 10, okay. Uh, it's not the highest possible. I know, I'm saying, is that the highest that we've, like, that we have all seen so far? Because 33 is a wild in number. Um, I could roll, the highest I could roll is a 33. We'll find out. Plus 14. <laughs> Alright, so, that was Arshan's turn. Next up, one of, next up is going to be three more of these ravens. One of them... Two of them actually are going to swoop down. Um, one of them that seems to have like one of these effigies uh, as well as uh, their knife. As they come towards, uh, as they land on the ground, you can see that the one that has them, their chains, um is going to ba, 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 come up and try and strike out against they are going to try and strike out against Arjan with their chainies so they are going to make a series of attacks that is an 8 to hit that's yeah, that 11 hits. an 8 hits no. Yeah, I, th I was no. like, what the fuck? What happened? Where was I? <laughs> um, and then a natural one. So all three of these chains strike out against you, and it you get the sense that like you are just bigger than they were expecting. So as their chains are coming out towards you, like they just can't get around. Like they're used to fighting other humanoids. Not that you aren't a humanoid, but you got a lot of extra stuff going on that they were just not accounting for. Um, so they are unable to get you with all three of their attacks. Um, next up, Effigy, Knife, um, Gwen, uh, you've just, like, cut down one of these individuals, turned them into, I believe, Levi described it in chat as one of the Pikmin smoke, uh, of this Shad Archive dying and then just, like, turning into, uh, an essence of sorts. And you see that with this effigy, they cut their hand again, bring it out towards you, and they, like, with their thumb towards the center of it, push upwards almost like if it was a little body. They are, like, breaking its spine over their thumb. As they do this, I need you to make a constitution save. Is this against being frightened or poisoned? It is not. Okie dokie. Let's go, champ. 22. A 22? Okay, that is a save. <laughs> there's one thing I'm good. All right, so... It's strength, but if there's two things, it's constitution. Excellent. So, Gwen, as they make this, like, breaking motion on the effigy, uh, and their blood mixes into it, you can feel just a searing heat rise up through your own spine in the same place that they seem to that they pushed up on this for as you are going to be taking a total 
of, let me get this right, it would have been 55 points of necrotic damage, but you succeeded, so you take half. So okay. you're be taking 27. Uh, do I have any necrotic... Resistance? I don't believe so. Okay. I know Corey currently does because of armor. Okie dokie. I typed in a number and it was like 18? No. Thanks, okay. D&D Beyond. Then you have one more spear holding wizard. And they are kind of looking around, seeing the battle as a whole. What they are going to do. <laughs> Spellcasters are fun. They are going to make a ranged spell attack at Arjan. For a natural 20. Mm -hmm. As they shoot a witch bolt at you. So... It is going to be a third level witch bolt, but because it is, uh, yeah, you take one on each of your turns for the duration, so it doesn't actually do anything when it hits. Reading the spell, is that right? I thought, I yep. thought there was. An oh, initial... on a hit, you take one d12 damage, and then on each of your turns, and that's for a first level spell. But they did it at, they would have done it at fifth level. That is the highest that they are able to do. I'm sorry. Is this the one that's I'm attacking? No, or this is, this is a, th there is a third one that has their sleeves rolled up, spear out. Their mask is a little cracked to help differentiate stylistically. Um, so that is going to be four. Let me just check. So that'd be 5d12 on the Witch Bolt. Mm -hmm. For a total of 18. Okay. That is 18 points of electric damage, and that, like, lightning, that cackling energy just seems to be coursing around you at this point. Mm. I'm going to absorb elements. Okay. Okay. Uh, and it seems like one of these ravens that has stayed there is just sort of like staying on a branch, just sort of observing the encounter as it unfolds. At the bottom of the round, Caleb. Oh, yeah, that's right. <clears throat> I'm first on the second round. Um... Yeah, that's a good way to look at it. Bonus action, blessing of the raven queen 30 feet away. Okay. <clears throat> uh, and then he'll fly an additional 20 for good measure. Uh, from Flutter, he's casting Steelwind Strike, targeting all available uh, Shatterkai, because okay. I can hit five people. Gotcha. So there are a total of six Shatterkai, and one of them is still a burb. So a total all of seven. All Okay, so um, so there are six humanoids, one burb. Okay. If I could hit the two effigy ones, sure. Okay. Uh, probably leave the one that Corey is on, and hit the other three. I'm on one of the effigies. Oh, you're on one of the effigies. Mm -hmm. So excluding one of the effigies. Okay. Everyone else, gotcha. except for the effigy and bird. Sure, sure. So first hit, 23 for yep. 40 points of force damage. Okay, just a second. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Minus 40. Okay. The uh, next hit is 21. Also hits. For uh, 42. Okay. Okay. Third is 31 for 38 points of force damage. Okay. 
Uh, fourth hit is a 16. Okay, a 16 misses that one. Cool. Then final hit is a 17. A 17 just hits. And they are taking 23 points of force damage. Okay. And I'm choosing to remain where I am instead of teleporting. Okay. They are all still standing. But it looks like they have taken some, taken quite a bit of damage. Yep. Okay. So that is the end of the first round. At the top of... Oh! Because they took damage. The one that had cast the confusion on Gwen needs to make a concentration check. They succeed. The one who made a witch bolt onto Arjan also needs a concentration check. Also succeed. They're good. So the next up is the one who initially tried to uh, hit Arjan with a witch bolt, but failed uh, and is now currently finding themselves uh, very, very close to Gwen. Uh, and you see that they grip the spear that is upon their back and Gwen uh you can see that this has almost a like in a way this reminds you of like how the goliaths make spears like how your tribe does it seems like uh there are certain bits of knowledge that seem to have been passed on through the generations as it were but it has uh at the spear tip it looks like there is actually a set of bones that are kind of uh interwoven into the leather strap that is keeping this more wicked looking blade uh together as they take this swing it around and they are going to try and uh stab at you with their spear so that is a and you did a reckless attack correct i actually didn't okay cool so 17 to hit uh that actually hits okay sounds good so that is going to be four, six points of piercing damage. Okay. And 22 points of necrotic damage. Of course it is. Then they are going to try and stab you again mm -hmm. for a 22 to hit. Mm-hmm. Nine points of piercing damage. Followed up with a tasty 18 points of necrotic damage. All right. All righty. So that is theirs. And then... Let me see if they're... Yeah. They would do that. Um, so they stab at you once, stab at you twice, and then, uh, with a flourish of their spear where they kind of cock it, uh, so that way the shaft of the spear is, like, underneath the back of their arm, uh, blade edge pointed down, they bring out a hand, and they actually go to, uh, they are going to try and make a, uh, an attack towards you, uh, with a spell... Want to do anything with that? That's a, you got a mage slayer. Oh me, yes, I want to use yeah. that. If you would like yeah, to yeah. use it, just, they are. A... I thought you were asking for a counter spell, so sorry. No, I. No. I'm very rarely in within the the space that I can actually use it. So, all right, yes, I would like to. Uh, when you uh, when a creature within five of you casts a spell, you can use your reaction to make a single melee weapon attack. So, okay. Uh, yeah. Twenty five to hit. Twenty five hits. 28 damage. Poof. Poof indeed. Okay. Sounds good. There we are. So you like you see them casting the spell, they reach out towards you and you just like, I don't fucking get don't you fucking touch me. I don't know you. This is my purse. And like you swing up with your fucking axe. Uh and they get a, I believe. Let me check to see. 
That would be a 16. I don't know throw. you. A 16 is my AC. Okay, 16 is your AC, so they are going to meet. And you get hit with 15 points of necrotic damage Ooh. as they cast a chill touch. Uh, ah. And then, like, as they connect with you, you your uh, axe connects with them. Uh, they are going to use their reaction. And you see they, like, just pop in front of you. Like, they don't burst necessarily, but in the same way that the individual who kind of, like, fell backwards turned into more of a mist, you see that they also turn into this blackened mist with a, uh, like, with that gaze of intent through the mask, and they seem to disappear. Gwen believes she's killed this thing. Next up is the one with the effigy that is directly on Cory. So... Let's wrestle. So, because Kalem flew backwards, so Arjan, Corey, and Kalem, or no, Arjan, Corey, and Gwen, I need you each to make a constitution saving throw. Is this a spell? It is not. 21. 21. 20. 20. What was that? I said natural 20 for a 27. All right, so you guys all pass on that one. That's totally fine. <laughs> That's cool. I didn't want to hit with that one anyway. Yeah. What'd it do? Uh, you are each going to be taking 23 points of psychic damage. Is that uh, already have? Uh, it would have done something else if it was a success. As uh, you see, like with this uh, with this effigy in their hand, Corey, rather than like cutting the palm of their hand to bleed, they're already looking pretty roughed up from Calum's silver wind strike, from you attacking them. So they just flip the blade to be more of like a downward motion, and you see that they like at the base of their stomach, they just cut upwards across their chest towards their own shoulder and with all of this blood pouring out getting a look at it it's not a reddish color like one would expect it almost looks like blackened tree sap that seems to be pooling out of this wound they rub the effigy across it and then just go to break it in their hand and as they do they unleash a wave of weariness it seems to affect you all yeah. that is it for them next up Corey. Uh, for my first attack, I'd like to shove him out of the tree. <laughs> yep, make a shove attack. Um, it's a contested athletics or acrobatics. They're gonna do with acrobatics. acrobatics. I thought so. Shatter Kai. I mean, knowing Calum, he would have done athletics, but... <laughs> I got a 26. That is a number that mm -hmm. they are not able to meet. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. In any circumstance, only a nat 20 would have saved them, but instead they are going to be falling 20 feet out of this tree as you heckin' push them. So roll 2d6 for me. Bookie. For the fall damage. Uh, four. <laughs> okay. As they just whoosh, onto the ground. Flat. Uh, I'm gonna land on top of them with a sword. Okay. Here I come. If you are jumping down on this individual, I would give you advantage as they are like directly Aww. below. Like you're That's doing so the plunging you. strike from Dark Souls. Like essentially, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I got a twenty-five. That'll do it. Uh, it's thirteen slashing damage and six radiant damage right off the top. Is that does that kill them? It does not. They are still up. All right. Uh, second level smite. Uh, 15 more radiant damage. Okay. They look like they are barely hanging on at this point. Come on. All right. I'll stand on top of them. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. Next up, uh, the individual that uh, was able to make Gwen heckin' confused 
still up in their tree, still minding their own business. Um, but they are going to look over towards you, Calum. And you see that they begin to, um, like, they, again, sort of, like, work their fingers in a way. But then you see um, that three of their fingers turn in. And as they do, three bolts of energy appear above them as they go to cast a spell. Um, sure. This is, will be funny. Uh, I'm expending a sorcerer point to distance a counterspell. Okay. Sounds And cool. counterspelling at fifth level. Just a snap of his fingers and the bolts sputter out. All right. Sounds good. All of the bolts that this individual was planning on doing, <sighs> not able to be done. They, may, they take a deep sigh, but are still up in the tree. Uh, and they actually will begin making their way up higher to try and uh, be less visible but still maintain their spell. That is it for them. Gwen, roll a d10 for me. Okay. Show me potato salad. Oh, that's an 8. That is an 8? Oh, no, I'm sorry. I rolled oh, okay. a d8. I, but I did roll an 8 on the d10. Good. Good. So, uh -oh. <laughs> the creature uses its action to make a melee attack against a randomly determined creature within its reach. If no creature is within its reach, the creature does nothing this turn. Oh, me. Okay, I'm sorry. I thought you were talking about nope. the caster for a second. I was like, well, oh, okay. Nope. It's uh, weird, but all right. That means that motherfucker Gwen's on? Yep. He's got the sombrero, Gwen. So uh, you right. have to make your attacks against them. Okay, so uh, just normal two attacks? Yep, just your normal two attacks. Okay, Maybe the two. first. Uh, so I'm going to roll at uh, recklessly because, yes. So the first one is a uh, 27. And okay. then the second one is. Wow, that's not. not uh, is 21 to hit. Both of those hit. Okie dokie. Uh, first damage is 25. Okay. Second damage is 18. All right. So. Gwen, this one goes down just as easily as the one previously, and then same thing as they fall backwards, you just... Or no, sorry, because they had oh, turned invisible. Oh, that's right, he wasn't there. Yeah, they yes. had bamfed away. So, Who's closest to me? So it is not actually who is closest, it is based on who is within reach, is the way that the spell is worded. So if no creature is within reach, then you do nothing this turn. Okay. Yeah. So no attack. I can we flavor it that Gwen still thinks something is there and she's just fucking swinging. Oh yeah, for sure. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. You still think like this guy turned invisible and then like reappeared like in the same spot, like maybe like five feet away, like ha ha! You thought that was the real me, wizards and such. Uh, and so yeah, you have just been swinging for the trees on that one. Uh, but they are still up. Thank you for helping me remember that one. Uh, Gwen, make a wisdom save at the end of your turn. Three. They are taking a beating like no other. Like this, this must be the Raven Queen's guard. The, like the yeah, most, obviously. Clearly the most tough, determined of individuals. Um, can I use a bonus action to, uh, Summon Grayskull, since that's kind of what I would do anyways, or should I, is that, yeah. is my turn just, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, you can use your bonus action to summon Grayskull. Okay. When you do, I want you to roll me a d4. A d4? Actually, uh -oh. no, it'd, it'd be, yeah, a d4 on this one. Okie dokie. Two? A two? Okay. Uh, you go to summon Grayskull, Salamarn comes out. I, I didn't call on you. And she looks at you and just uh, sort of like shrugs, like sorry. Oh, man. <laughs> like I don't know. I think I like to. I like to believe I have my own good qualities too. <laughs> I'm fun at parties. I'm fun at parties. Um, yes. Yeah, so Salamarn comes forth, not Grayskull this time. Next up, Archon. Did the guy that I was shooting, who's got me in a witch bolt, die? Um, the guy... No, he is still up. 
Do I need to take Witch Bolt damage? Witch Bolt is on his turn. He can use an action to maintain the Witch Bolt, but I don't okay. believe... I would like to heal him before he gets the chance. Oh, for sure. That seems like a really good thing to do. Uh, is a 19 hit. Oh, yes. Okay. I would like to mark him as my favorite foe. Okay. Oh, shit, where's that? There we go. Okay. Uh, so one second. Okay. So uh, sixteen plus uh plus five, so twenty one points of force damage, and then. The witch bolt, um, as it's latching going onto me, um, there's just an arc that connects between uh, him and my gun, or him and my crossbow, which is now going to return some of the damage from absorb elements. Okay. Fuck yeah. Arjan just pulls out a Glock. <laughs> I've been saving this for the right time. <laughs> Um, so, yeah, they take a total of 21. Uh, 22. 22, okay. Tiamat can't sort them all out. <laughs> oh my god. Y'all act like wizards did not put a gun in the dragon book. They probably did. They did. Oh. Oh. Well. They, they, they actually did. I would like to shoot him again. Yeah, <laughs> do it. He's still up. Uh, he maintained the witch bolt. Uh, 22 to hit. Yeah, that'll hit. Uh, 17 points of damage. Okay, let me see. He's doing good on the Witch Bolt right now. I can't roll to hit you for shit, but I can roll to maintain a Witch Bolt. Alrighty, so... For my bonus yep. action... I would like to vanish. Okay. Into the shadows you go. And uh, move some distance. And yeah, there we go. Okay. Sounds good. Next up is one of the ones with the effigies that is not directly under Corey or in uh, a fierce amount of duress. Uh, and they are going to yes. you see that they also have again effigy out dagger out and Calum I need you to make a wisdom save twenty seven twenty seven Okay, so you feel a magic begin to wash over you as it seems like the forest and the land around you begins to shift and change as you almost see some sort of creature making its way towards you. You know an illusion spell when you see it. Nice try, motherfucker. You, no, 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 no. Uh, as their phantasmal killer spell does not pop off. Going <laughs> so, you know, fun things that they can do. Um, let me see. Yep, that was all that that one could do for the turn. Um, next up is one of these individuals with chains that can no, uh, that was near Arjan, uh, but Arjan turned invisible. Uh, and got the fuck out of there. Uh, I think the Witch Bolt still maintains, though. The Witch Bolt does, but it is not the Witch Bolt guy's turn. Ah. Yeah, this is the one that had just, like, the the arm chains that they were trying to get. However, is the Witch Bolt visible? Um. Maybe. Depends. I think in the spell description there is a crackling... Oh, I'll double check, but semantics. The damage from Witch Bolt is going to be arriving on that 
Duder's next turn, and the guy that has the chain arms can't really make ranged attacks for the man who is currently flying, so... Either way, it does not really affect him. They are instead going to go over towards you, Corey, and they are going to make a series of chain attacks as you are on top one of their allies in a way that could be considered threatening. That is an eight to hit. Another eight to hit. Ooh, look at me. That's doubles. <clears throat> a 17. Nope. No? Okay. I didn't think so. Uh, next up is the Witch Bolt uh, individual. Um, and they are going to use their action to maintain the Witch Bolt. So, Arjan, you are going to be taking 1d12 of electric damage. Because casting Witch Bolt at higher levels only affects the initial damage. It's such a good... Honestly, a shame. <sighs> it's a great spell. Fun fact about Witch Bolt, there is a sustained arc of lightning. So even if you're invisible, you can see it. Uh, so you take five points of electric damage. Okay. And then if you are invisible and are injured, invisibility breaks, I believe? No. No? All right, then. If you take a hostile action. N not the invisibility spell. Oh, hmm. I, I am just invisible until the start of my next turn. Okay. Nice. Okay, 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 okay. Next up, Caleb. Uh, surveying the battlefield, who is left? So surveying the battlefield, you see uh, that Gwen is currently just like swinging her axe at nothing. Uh, Salomarn is next to, uh, next to Gwen, just sort of like, I don't know what is happening in this <laughs> Looks place. Looks at you, goes... Yeah, kind of one of those, like, like she said she didn't want me around. Why is she being so mean? Um, there is uh, the one that Corey has a blade directly on, and you can see that they're, like, they have done quite a quite a number on themselves, but getting pushed out of a tree and then having a sword with serrated edges plunged into them and pulled back out also seems to be doing a little bit of damage. Uh, their chest is heaving. They do not look like they are in a good way. There is, uh, there was one of the spellcasters who climbed farther up into a tree, um, and then there are uh, three more of them. One with uh, the effigy that tried to uh, do the phantasmal killer upon you. Another with chains that was trying to get at Corey, uh, and then a third spellcaster. Seems like they are trying really hard. To focus on this now, like floating ring of electricity, where it feels like something should be there, but it's just like you can't focus on the direct placement of it. My location can be detected, but I am still invisible. Visible. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> uh, getting sick and tired of the magic being casted at him, Calum starts walking forward. He draws a symbol on his mask, and he starts casting True Polymorph on himself. Okay. He's turning into a Beholder with a 150-foot cone of anti-magic staring at the tree. Can you do that? Yes. My bubble spell? Wild. Jesus Christ. Wizards are silly. I, I imagine as he's drawing the symbol, his um, body starts to um, morph the mask snaps open into that singular eye and there's just that wave of anti-magic that hits everyone yucky so wave of anti-magic that hits everyone that would also be well gwen doesn't really have any she kind of has magic i mean she's got spears would, the, would salamarn go away it's a class feature yeah it's an anti-magic field, so it doesn't suppress class abilities. Re read the read the thing. Beholder Central Eye creates an area of anti-magic as a, in the anti-magic field spell. 150-foot cone at the start of each of its turns, the Beholder decides which way the cone faces and whether the cone is active. The area works against the Beholder's own eye rays. Spells and other magical effects, except those created by an artifact or a deity, are suppressed in the sphere and can't protrude into it. So Gwen shouldn't be confused anymore? 
Also no Salomar. Okay, so... It is a magical effect. Gwen is no longer confused. Arjun's no longer invisible? No, and he's up above, I was guessing. Yeah. Okay. Uh, also, magic items become mundane. Cool. Cool. You still hit like a motherfucker. Do I? Yes. You have. Don't you have? Like, I don't have strength? twenty strength anymore. Uh, mm. because it's gonna is... be a multi-tailed fox. It's gonna be very cross with you. Yes. Well, no. Wraith is fine because it's it's an artifact. artifact. Yeah. Okay. So Runt the Runt axe, though. is not. It's fine. Now I have to do different math, and I'm not, you know, it's more of a me Just thing, from... but go ahead. <laughs> Just when I remembered I had my spellbreaker. Fantastic. Cool, but that is my action. Okay. Any other actions as a beholder? That's it. Okay, cool. Cool, cool. I can't cool. use eye rays yet. It has to be on my next turn. Okay. Um... So from the from uh, from behind, uh, up in a tree, who was previously invisible, having used a misty escape, you see one of these raven-headed folk that has like spear along their back. See this giant beholder, and they make a like sort of like a a, a, a rattling chirping noise almost in the same way that like a a raven would speak more towards like a family versus like as an alert and you see that they also like pull in three fingers three bolts appear above them and they are going to try an eldritch bolt you three times or eldritch blast so they do not like this this is scary does a 21 hit you, Calum? If the uh, if the Eldritch Blast is in with my is within they my They appeared eye... in a tree oh. above and behind. Okay, so 21 does hit. 21 does hit. So that is going to be for 3d8. For 18 points on the first. Okay, I passed the concentration check. That is a... Does a 10 hit your beholder? No. Okay. Uh, and then a 24 on the third one. Yes. Okay. And that is going to be for... 16. Maintained concentration. Okay. Sounds good. So with the 16, that is it for their turn. Next up is the individual with the effigy who is currently caught inside of this uh, horrible spell place. This absolute, absolute bad time. Um, however... You see, Corey, that they, uh, while under your blade, inhale, exhale again. But as this exhale comes, there is just this wave of entropy that seems to escape from them. So I need, it would be in a 60-foot cube, it would be, I think that gets Arjan as well. So I need all of you to make a constitution saving throw. 17. You were muted. All of us, all of us? All of us, all of us. 14. 27. <clears throat> 20. Okay, so three succeed. Corey, uh, you are the only one who fails. So, on a success, or, yeah, on a success, you are each going to be taking 30 points of psychic damage. Jesus. On a failure. Corey, you are going to be taking 50 points of psychic damage and you gain one level of exhaustion. Oh no. 
Dude's blessing us with migraines. And that is all that they are able to do. Next up, Corey. I like that. I stab him again. Okay. He's prone, right? Yeah, he is prone. Uh, I'm in this magic cone, right? Mm-hmm. All right, I'm going to have to do some quick math. Well, see, do... there's also a funny thing about that anti-magic cone. The stipulation of magic by artifacts or gods. Oh, shit. Yeah, you know, you're right. Okay. Very um, strange. Artif my artifact is fine, though. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, well, 29 to hit. Yeah, that'll hit. Nine slashing damage, seven radiant damage. He had seven, so he goes down. All right. Um, and just... stab in, and they just, like, again, Pikmin ghost. Just... All right. Looking up, who do we have left? Looking up, you currently have left. What you can see is that there is one of these, like, shorter sleeved spellcasters with a spear that is on a lower branch another one uh behind be this beholder that your friend has emerged into uh there was another one that was up in a tree uh that seems to be just like away from all of this they don't want to fucking deal with any of this thing that's happening down here and then on the ground nearest you, there is uh, one of the others that seem to have, um, that had their chains ready trying to attack towards you, but were unsuccessful. Uh, another one with an effigy that is now within magic cone, and then a uh, another one of these spellcasters that was in the magic cone. It seems like all three of the more like spell-oriented, not effigy-based ones uh, are all still alive and kicking. All right, the chains guy is still alive. Right? Yeah, he's like directly on you. I thought so. Um, I'll give him my second attack. Okay. As a treat. Uh, thirty to hit. Okay, a thirty uh definitely hits. Roll for damage. All right, it'll be thirteen slashing damage. Um, and I'm gonna give him a fourth level smite. Okay. I'm not playing around anymore. I'm all warmed up. Uh, so that's going to be 24 plus 4, 28 radiant damage. Okay. When you do this, Corey, I would like for you to roll me a d100. Oh, God. What could this possibly mean? 52. 52? Yes. Previously stabbed guy, he turns into black smoke. With this large amount of divine energy, as you plummet them into this individual, you see that it's almost like a golden light that smells almost like a soft oh, spring. Oh, and God. And then they disappear. <laughs> I just stole him. They moved on. <laughs> oh, no. Ah, closure. <laughs> Closure comes in the... I don't like the connotations of this. This kind of implies that I need to go on a massacre. Or free the Raven Queen, you know? Yeah, no, free the Raven Queen. Right, right, right. Right, <laughs> right, right, yeah, that thing. Right, right, right. I, I should definitely right. do that. That's the <laughs> that's the not as easy way to do this. When all you have is a hammer, everything starts to look like nails. All right, I'm done. <laughs> that's my turn. Okay. Wait! There's oh, more. wait. No, never mind. I'm in an anti-magic field. Fuck! I and just remembered my shield gives people temporary hit points when I attack. Okay. Is it not an artifact? I don't think so. Shield is not. It's just a rare. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> He's a rare. That's it. Okay. For real this time. <laughs> Sounds good. Next up, uh, the spellcaster. Um that had been targeting Gwen with this confusion sees that this is like, this is a losing fight. And they go to like, they begin uh, like communicating with the others that are there seeing uh, what has just happened. And then it seems like they're like, it's caw is almost cut short by the one Raven that never turned into a Shadarkai. And you see that that Raven looks 
a little scared. And the others, like, kind of, like, they haven't really been communicating. They haven't really been talking. But it seems like they are a bit more on edge at this point. Next up, Gwen. Gwen, you're not confused anymore. It's great, but, like, oh, this axe is God. fucking heavy. I know what I was going to say. Gwen goes to raise her <clears throat> axe and immediately cannot and drops it. There's also a fucking she... beholder over there. Uh, yes. Am I confused to know what that is? You, how how much? You remember a beholder who picked you up with a levitating eye and skipped you like a cross against uh, like a rock across lava. That was uh, that was the thing that happened to Gwen. Let's go, champ. Gwen's gonna go attack the beholder <laughs> uh, with my hand axes because I can't fucking use my runt axe. Incredible. <laughs> attack oh, it all you want. All right, two two attacks. The first one's at 18 to hit. Uh, that hits. Uh, for 11 slash... Well, I don't know, I'm not, I, I, I haven't been adding my rage damage this whole time. I'm a, such a nub. Uh, uh, so that's 21 damage for that one. And then the second attack is 18. Hits. <clears throat> for 19 damage. I'm so fucking... I'm so dumb. We love you, LB! <laughs> Don't talk shit about my friend! I, I mean, I was rolling like 27 damage, so it's not like I was like, oh, I'm not doing that much. Passes. I spent this entire fight, like, attacking things and not even realizing I could be giving you guys temporary hit points for every attack I make. We're level Fair. 17. There's a lot to keep yeah, track of. Yeah, there's, there's a, a lot, lot to keep track of. Kalem's um, a beholder now. Uh, yeah. I'm Let's right, end this fight, right. or else this is going to be a permanent thing. Can I? Can I be on top? Can I use athletics to get on top of him, like and jump? Yeah. Up there? What right, the cool. fuck, Gwen? Twenty-five. Yeah. Uh, I have to roll. Don't beholder, Caleb, roll to defend against the scamp getting right on top of you. <laughs> Seventeen. So no. Scramble, scramble, scramble. The I did not. I will say I did not bring the run tax. I probably just dropped it in the rage and all that. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Confusion. And then there's a beholder, and I can't pick up my axe. Just go, Gwen. When you get on top of the beholder, you are no longer in front of its anti-magic eye beam. So suddenly your strength returns, but also your immediate confusion. <laughs> can, I, can I also say that this is the exact moment that Corey goes, Gwen, what are you doing? That's Caleb! And as soon as she says, that's, that's when the confusion hits. Yeah, right, so the eyes gloss over. Gwen, what are you doing? That's war. That, that's <laughs> the enemy. Like, you see, like, the, the health bar appear that has the skull on it. You're like, we're gonna die here, but I'll have a glorious death. <laughs> Gwen, make a wisdom save for me. Okay. <laughs> it's a three. You're still confused and having a time. Having this... a good okay, time. Okay, I'm, I'm just gonna say it right now. Time. Let's. I. This is my favorite thing to do. Is just fuck up battles. It's fine. Don't worry about it. This will be. Fun. Hit me against my friends any day, please. He's a beholder. All right. Now. All things are off the table. The DM will remember that. Uh oh. Next up, Arjan. Arjan Gwen is on top of Caleb the Holder. Just wildin. Absolutely wildin. Uh huh. And and many Shadarkai are dead. Uh yes. It looks like the only Shadarkai that are still alive uh is one that had uh effigy and knife that it seems to be like taking stock of the fact that like you guys are attacking each other now, and that seems pretty cool. Um then there are uh, the three spellcasters, but uh, it seems like they are all a little bit more on edge, and they seem to sort of be, like, looking around more pensively during this. There was a raven in the tree, right? There was. 
And this raven, uh, from what you had been able to understand, uh, like it called out something, and the others seemed to listen to it. I'm going to grab the raven. Okay. I would like to, well, I guess I'm, I'm guessing I'm going to need to grapple the raven. Yes. Also, I've been forgetting to put my stress on everything. My bad. You're fine. There's a lot to keep track of. I mean, if anything, what's going on right now is totally playing into it because Quinn's attacking Caleb and <laughs> Caleb's fucking over everything. Uh, 12 to hit the raven. Okay, 12 to hit the raven. This is a grapple check, correct? Yes. Yes. So that is a... That'd be a 13. So as you go to grab it, they are just barely able to, like, bird their way out of your grasp. I don't know a good, like, swivel or swizzle way for a bird, but they're going to, like, no, oh, no. This, this is fun because I always keep forgetting that I have this ability uh, that comes from my uh, subclass. It is called Stalker's Flurry. Uh, once on each of my turns, whenever I miss with a weapon attack, I can make another weapon attack as part of the same action. Okay. Do it again. They got an eight. Means my blood died to roll 19. Okay. Just pop. Grab a hold of this here burb. I didn't think I would get this far. <laughs> I, re I really dog chasing cars. <laughs> uh, I I want I want to like now that I now that I have the bird in my hand. How long do you expect this to go on? And uh, use uh, hopefully hopefully make an intimidation check. Yeah, roll for intimidation. Uh, I would also like to use forceful presence. Okay. Eighteen. Eighteen. Um, so you ask this bird how long it expects this to go on. And the bird responds in common. And it says, this has been going on for as far as we remember. In this moment, we do not fear death. We do not fear you. We fear what comes. And as it says, we fear what comes, Arjan, you can feel now perched up on this branch near where the raven was that the ground shakes and shudders a bit. Am I on? I, I, I thought I would have to like jump up into the tree to go get it. Um, but because you got wingies, I didn't know. Because mm -hmm. uh, even if you're like on a branch, like that shimmy shake is still like through the tree, unless you were just like mid flight still. I I, I don't know. Yeah. Um, but I ha I have a bird in my hand. Apparently, that's worth two in the bush. Oh shit! Incredible. Um, yeah, even, I'd say, like, your perception's high enough that even if you weren't directly, like, standing in a tree, you would still, like, see the tree shake in an almost rhythmic style. Okay. Uh, that was, that was action, uh, that, intimidation, that was Intimidation, I, I would count as part of your action of grabbing was, said bird. That was a lot of things. I'm done. Okay. Next up. is the is the the raven uh that is currently a burb uh and you you have it in one hand it begins to like almost like a weird putty in your hand 
begins to shift and grow into the size of a medium humanoid. I do not let go of the neck. Okay. Make a strength check. Five. Five. So your claws are still like it transforms. Your claws are still like on the scruff of the shirt. And you see that or uh, like their tunic kind of thing. And you see that they just pull out a knife and just cut the fabric away, allowing themselves to just fall. And you see that they fall for a good 15, uh, about 15, 20 feet or so, landing on the ground. Um, and then uh, they... This one, uh, you actually see, like, has uh, chains around their arms. But they don't look like they are in the mood necessarily to deal with Beholder and Gwen and this friend who just like gold vaporized one of their other friends. Um, and they begin making their way into the tree line. On the next turn. You see that the one with the effigy stows it, also makes his way into the tree line. The spellcaster that had um, originally placed that eldritch, uh, or not eldritch blast, but the uh, like lightning onto you, Arjan, you see that they uh, just like quickly turn do a quick jump and then turn into a raven in flight and begin making their way away as they disperse from this road um and begin just trying to vacate the premise you hear what sounds like a Imagine if you could have the laughter of a child's birthday party playing on an old record that seems to scratch and skip as it goes. There is a rhythmic, almost continuous doof, 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 as the sound of that laughter gets closer. And looking in the trees of the direction of this walking, you can see standing at roughly around 15 feet high or so a series of eyes almost like when you gaze upon a collective of critters inside of like a hollow of a tree but above that a large smile that seems to glow with this eerie yellow light and twin eyes that gaze above it as what looks like a almost upside down maple leaf springing legs from the bottom begins to come into view. And as this thing comes into view, that is where we are going to go into our break for the evening when we come what back. The fuck? Ah, it's, I'm in a good mood today. This is going to be great. When we come what back, five to ten minutes, grab a drink, grab a friend, go to indooradventure.redbubble.com. <laughs> It's going to be a good time. We'll see you guys shortly. All right, everybody. See you soon. And we're back. Steven. Hey. So a question for all of you because spooky times is coming out. Do you eat your Kit Kats with the skin on? Yes. So there is more than one way to skin a Kit Kat. Mm-hmm. Here it is. I'm, I'm going to figure out what the skin Are you is eating a kiwi Kat with the shit on it? Yeah. Oh. RJ, no, I'm sure there's fiber in there, but <laughs> that's, that's more disturbing are. than your statement. I, I think the statement was a red herring to detract from the fact that he's just raw dog and a kiwi over here. <laughs> I have Sir? so many questions. <laughs> like, okay, so like, what's the skin on a Kit Kat? Is it the chocolate or is it the wrapper? It's also, the wrapper. <laughs> like the implication here seems to be like you don't know what a kiwi is called and you've been calling them Kit Kats for your entire life. Wait, this isn't a Kit Kat? <laughs> <laughs> this is a very sour Kit Kat. <laughs> 
the bit was so strong this week that my husband just looked at me and it takes a lot to get him to do that <laughs> are you guys okay <laughs> I mean, sidebar you can also eat bananas with the skin on too no, during a game oh my God, no. during a game we're not no, doing can. it no oh, no I can, no I can no, right now. no no please god that's where all the potassium that is. is. I'm pretty sure that's against Twitch's terms of service. <laughs> eating bananas with the skin on. Oh, chop. I would just I would just suggest not eating bananas on Twitch, period, <laughs> and instead playing games like the game that we are we gonna play. Yes, we can't do bananas with the skin on. That's not our brand. Somebody else already got to it. So speaking of oh, God, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so. Shadowfell. It's spooky. We're serious. It's scary. Uh, speaking of serious, scary things, y'all had heard uh, large lumbering footsteps coming from a 15-foot tall creature that seemed to be emanating sounds like a children's birthday on an old recorded machine. Uh, almost like an old record with that like nice static popping to it, but coming from what you assume is an, orga an, an organic creature. Uh, does not really uh, belay the most positive of results. With that being said, as it approaches, uh, you all are able to make a perception check if you would like, or at least uh, those of you who are not uh, currently down with a sickness, uh, such as our dear friend Gwen, who is focused very much on this large creature underneath her that... Must have eaten. Must have eaten, Caleb. When I rolled a one. Oh, bountiful luck, my dear! It's happening. Does that mean I get to roll again? Yes, roll you do. Well. Then you have to take the new roll. <laughs> Is it another one? Is it another one? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, I do what I can. Okay. You're gonna take your one, and you're gonna like it. Nine. Okay. Oh, nine. Okay. <laughs> okay, and then uh, Corey, you would also be able to make a perception check. Calum, you can certainly make a perception check. You got so many eyes right now. I got an eighteen. Sixteen. Eighteen okay. and a sixteen. So Calum and Corey. Uh, Calum, your uh, eye stocks are going every which way, trying to find the source of this birthday party. Uh, and Corey, you just get the. Oh innate sense that something in these woods is wrong mm. yes Caleb. it's actually a 22 a 22 even better with your eye stockies uh in the direction of this birthday party that seems to be approaching you see again the same outline of what looks like um a multitude of eyes in uh what would be almost an abdominal region like a center uh center of mass followed up with at the at the peak of this uh what looks like almost like maple leaf shaped uh and we say maple leaf shaped because it has two large uh two large points that come out at the top another two that come down and then a fifth fold that leads to the bottom where it is then a spindly set of legs that come down onto the ground but these spindly set of legs seem like they are transient, almost. These legs are not stable. It seems like something is shifting and moving about them as the legs themselves move. Uh, and you can see that draped over what appears to be this incredibly sized creature are like the like bits and pieces of Shadarkai armor. You see masks sort of hanging off of it. And in the in the bows of this creature, of this entity, you can see that there are small effigies that seem to sort of just be like rattling and swinging with it. It seems to be approaching you directly, but it does not seem like it has necessarily taken notice of you, only that something has happened in this area of what you're assuming it's woods. What would you like to do? Gwen is, uh, I would say that we are still in combat, uh, but it would be Calum's turn next in the initiative order of where we were going. 
So, Caleb, you are a beholder. Gwen is on top of you, trying to do her heckin' best. What would you like to do? Um, hmm. Start my turn. I'm disabling the anti-magic cone. You're shutting your eye? Shutting my eye. Eyes wide shut. <clears throat> um... Hey, baby, I've got eyes. You've got eyes. We should make some baby. Uh, I'm going to start flying upward. Okay, floating up. How high? Uh, I can only move the 20 feet. Okay, good. Okay, sounds good. Corey. Uh, noise. Yeah, or sorry. Uh, I'd like to hold my action to see what this creature is going to do, but it's going to be blasted with an eye ray. Okay. I should probably roll what I is gonna get blasted at it. Yeah, you can pre-roll for that one. Eat Corey. It's going to be Yeah. Um I'm gonna run over there and misty step uh up onto Calum. Uh and I'm going to uh smack uh Gwen with a cleansing touch and remove the confusion. Okay. Uh, you can use this action to end one spell on yourself or one willing creature that you touch five times for a long rest. Yeah. Gwen, your magical confusion has been released. Corey is on top of this beholder with you. And the beholder, while you're used to them, just like eyes up top, start blasting, just looks like it is levitating off the ground as you have... hear these large footsteps approaching. Can I have picked up her axe on my way over? Yeah, I would say you'd like be able to pick up the runt axe. Run over, like sw like swoop it off of the ground, and then misty step up there. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I do. Okay, so two of you are on top of Beholder Calum. Uh, Gwen, magical effect of confusion has ended on you. Uh, Corey does not seem as uh, threatened or scared of this Beholder. Um... And now that the confusion spell has worn off, you can hear that sound of like children playing and yelling and and having a raucous time that seems to be coming from the direction that you look to see where it is coming from. Again, as we have described, is this large creature, but 20 feet up into the air, you are almost like eye level with this creature and you can see these two hollow eyes almost look like they have been bored into a piece of tree but rather than meeting the uh innermost wood of said tree they just seem to continue going into some sort of yellowish glowing infinity my god Corey, get down i got this take care of that Take care of what? She rears her run tax up. I, Just <clears throat> this very uh, weak. No. Oh. Grabs it <laughs> like it's Calum. This one, what? not that one. What? This is Calum. Right. Sorry. Uh <laughs> she's gonna hop down. Okay, jump down 20 feet. Uh, and then move towards my the new friend that's joined us on this adventure. Uh, go for the big guy. I'm sure not close. he's not close enough for that. No. But, okay. I run towards him. Okay. Ready to attack when he gets close enough. Sure. Sounds good. Okay. He's making his way towards you. Uh, Arjun. Making my way. Have I noticed the thing? Because I, I rolled a nine, and I feel like I would have been pretty preoccupied about the were raven that left my grasp. I would say you were preoccupied, but seeing everyone else sort of, like, looking in a direction at this point, you can at least look over and see what looks to be, like, the silhouette of this thing that is making its way towards you. Oh, shit. And I see Gwen immediately. Gwen going, just like, yep, next up. Let's fucking roll. How hurt, how hurt does Gwen look? Very. Gwen. What? 
Are you sure we're up for this? Dude, if I'm going down, I'm fucking going down fighting. Let's go! <laughs> I don't think I have healing. Oh, yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. Ooh, not a lot. <laughs> Uh, I shoot you. Uh, Fuck take, you. <laughs> take 44 plus 4. Do you want me to roll it? Mm hmm. Okie dokie. 1, 2, 3, 4. Okie dokie. Thank you. Shit, I'll restart eats my action. Oh. Shit, uh, do I do I have any clue what this thing is? Or what its intent is. Um, you can make an insight check if you want to gather its intent. If you want to try and grok what this thing is, that would be an arcana check. Do the arcana. Uh, 21. No, sorry, 19. A 19? You have no idea what this thing is. I'm going to vanish. Seems like a safe bet. Okay. Next up is the creature. And as it has been making its way towards you all, you see that it sort of pauses. And then it's head does not necessarily turn with an articulation that is begetting of a humanoid, although its head does have a humanoid shape that seems to emerge into a multi-pointed, almost crown on its head. And you can hear the creaking and straining of wood as it seems to kind of move its head. And pauses and you hear the laughter cease and then from deep within its chest you hear play 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 as a multitude of voices all begin to chant and echo play with that same staticky sound that seems to come through again an old sonograph an old record player as it begins to march closer towards your current vicinity as it gets closer and you can get a much better look at this thing now you can see that there that its legs have a almost fleshy quality to them that seem to be a mixture of meat and wood almost like the wood somehow turns into a kind of meat like texture you see like animal heads that seem to grow for just a, sing a solid single solitary moment from these leggies and then retract in and from this mantle that it sort of carries upon its shoulders also made of wood you see what looks like dozens of humanoid arms that seems to sprout out from underneath and it sort of like rears up its right shoulder. And as it does, you watch as this wave of humanoid appendages comes out, arms that seem to grow forward. Like a single arm comes out, you see the hand, and then from the wrist forearm area, you see another arm grow out at the shoulder, extend out up until it again is like arm to wrist, arm to wrist. 
as a massive coil that it seems to grab onto the side of a tree and just sort of like move it out of the way almost effortlessly as the trees themselves their roots don't come up it seems like these trees almost seem to warp out of its way as it continues to move as it is no as it does not disturb the forest around it as it seeks a new playmate it approaches there were some readied actions i believe uh can it make me or they make me a dexterity saving throw as a petrification rate comes out okay okay they, a dexterity save that would be an 11. they fail so <clears throat> on a failed saving throw the creature begins to turn to stone and is restrained uh, it must repeat the saving throw at the end of its next turn. On okay. a success, the effect ends. On a failure, the creature is petrified. Okay. Yeah, and it just continues to echo the words play as this happens. But petrification ray. Bamfed. Gwen. Gwen go attacky attacky on this thing. Okay. Two attacks with the run axe. Boom! 22 to hit on the first one. That'll hit. You have advantage, by the way, because it's restrained. Okie dokie, 22 to hit on the first one. Yeah, that'll hit. And a 16 to hit on the second one. d and Beyond, what the hell? A 16 does not hit. Okay. I do 37 damage. Okay, awesome. Do you need uh, fire versus slashing? Uh, I do not. However, I am going to need you to roll an additional d100 for me. <laughs> oh, no. Lay in your bed. <laughs> 81. An 81. So, Gwen, as you strike out towards this thing, and your axe sinks into its leggy, you see, like if you were cutting into a tree, it sort of shakes and shivers. And as it does, one of these effigies falls from its boughs and lands on the ground next to you. As the blood from this creature's leg seems to ooze out and splatter onto the effigy, you watch as the blood wraps around it like a strange casing as the effigy begins to grow. And it grows to your height. And you see that it begins to grow pieces of skin over what looks to be grass and straw underneath as it takes on your features. It looks exactly like you. But if you were made of the same material as this wood creature's legs and you see that it has as well what looks to be the runt axe, but made entirely out of this freakish combination. And from your own mouth that you see looking at you, you hear that childlike voice play. Oh my God. <laughs> All right. So that was it for your turn. Next up, Arjun. I am no longer invisible. Uh, <laughs> I cast Hunter's Mark, uh, third level. Okay. I toot. Okay. 31. A 31 hits. Uh, third level hunter's mark is... I can't do that. <laughs> That's from the bow. Never mind. Uh, 15 points. Okay, 15 points. I need you to roll me a d100, please. Twenty-eight. 
28. With a 28, as the bolt strikes into this large creature and it sort of recoils, you see that in the multitude of eyes that it has in its abdomen that seem to be almost like a wood cage representing ribs, two of those eyes disappear. And... Arjan, the feeling that you get from your crossbow feels like there is something inside of it. I drop it. Okay. <sighs> Not a creature necessarily but there is an additional presence in the crossbow yeah i drop it yep uh i'm gonna i'm gonna go up and, and, and drop some acid okay uh i need it to make a save okay deck save i believe so yes that's a natural one yeah. 20 points of acid damage. Hoof. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, that is it. Okay. So next up is this thing's turn. Uh, for the petrification, is it end of turn, start of turn? End of turn. End of turn. Okay. So, it is going to, <laughs> as it is here, and it has been blasted, it has been cut into, you see that its head its body squats down and it is eye level with Gwen. Gwen, I need you to make a charisma saving throw. Of course you do. Uh, is this a frightening thing? It is not, but it is a spell related thing. Is, and he is within five, to, five feet of me, so. His large wooded face that seems to have like flesh turning to wood where his neck would be. Yeah, that's right mm -hmm. there. All right, that's an eight. 15 is the highest. 15 as a spell save? Yeah. That is a failure. However, spell that is within five feet of you. I can, I can you... attack, yes. Mage Slayer. Mage Slayer? Yes. Reaction? Uh, that is a critical. Okay. That is a nat 20. Okay, all right, hold on. For 34. Yeah, right. And two, three, d12. Plus. Uh, oh, that was terrible. Oh, except for I get to reroll once. So that's 12. Uh, so 30 damage. Okay. So it takes 30. Did you add your rage to that? Mm hmm Okay. Roll I that rolled D a two and a one. <laughs> Roll that D100. Oh, Lord in heaven. 40. A 40? Yeah. So with a 40, Gwen, as you strike out against this creature, and this creature looks at you directly... It is the rest of you see that it is almost like a negative photo filter has been placed over Gwen, where your skin has like that, like very like dark blue color, but then like the greenish outline, your hair normally like a golden sandy blonde is now more of like, just like this weird darkish green. Um, and you 
are banished as part of the banishment spell. However, the banishment spell from this creature does not send you back to the material plane. It takes you somewhere else. Gwen, when you are, when this creature looks at you and looks at you directly, you can feel yourself just like look up at it. And in that moment, you get lost in the infinite depth of its twin yellowed eyes, this large carved smile that seems to be far larger and greater than it has any right to be. And you feel yourself vanish. The rest of you see Gwen get turned into this almost mist-like property that is then brought into the rib cage of this creature. Gwen, when you blink for a moment, you are not in the shadow fell. You are in this place where the ground is wet and kind of mushy and looking around there is meat everywhere that you can see and you have a growing voraciousness inside of you that you don't know if you will be able to contain indoor what the fuck don't eat the grass and the shadow fell great you guys Girl, remember baby. the baby <laughs> you guys remember time. hell that was great Let's there's go a, back there. There's a pop concert in hell. I want to go to hell. <laughs> and yeah, that this is, is worse than hell. As has been established a multitude of times. So then this creature makes a save, correct? At disadvantage because it's restrained. At disadvantage. It got an 18 at disadvantage. Passes. Okay. So as the stone is beginning to like come up, it's like meaty wooded legs. It just sort of flexes them out and that meat sloughs off. There's instead this strange goopy looking Gwen that is standing right where Gwen used to stand that had been brought into an existence when Gwen had slashed it. And it, oh. this small Gwen looks towards the rest of you and it says, play. And she rushes towards you. Um, there is Beholder. There is Corey. Arjan, you are. I'm still on top of the Beholder. Yeah, okay. I'm 20 feet up. Sounds good. I'm You're like circling. I'm, I'm like circling the. Okay. <laughs> You've lost your only ground target you see that they reach into a belt that they have on oh, and what no. looks like a warhammer. Oh no! And you see them rear up and throw it in the direction of the beholder. Gwen, I would like for you to roll me the Sunforger, please. <laughs> yes. I mean, no! Beautiful. 23 oh, to, to hit. A 23 to hit. Um, Sunforger. Oh, they... yes. It is exploding, oh, mind you. Uh, yes, yes, yes. So they need to make a DC uh, 15 deck saving throw. Okay. All right. So that would be, what's the radius for the blast? 20. 20. So <laughs> it would be Beholder and Corey. As Arjan is like flying like the fuck away from all of this. I pass. Okay. Corey? You're muted. Sorry, this isn't a spell, right? Uh, no, this is what looks like a very strange facsimile uh, of the Sunforger. I have the most useless abilities. Nothing is ever a spell. Uh, I got a 13. A 13? So 13, I believe, is a fail? Yes. Uh, yep. So full da uh, it's fire damage, 21 fire damage total, uh, half as much on a fail. Or, I'm sorry, half as much on a, on a success. Okay. 
so take damage accordingly on that as this fake Gwen has taken the place of other Gwen. Next up, Caleb. Big old beholder boy. Uh, <clears throat> 20 feet in the air is not that bad. <sighs> yeah, I guess. Do it for the comedy. I dismiss my beholder form. <clears throat> Falling down to the ground. Um, can I, like, skirt past Gwen out of uh, uh, f f fake Gwen out of her reach? You I think are. we're twenty feet up in to. the air. That is correct. So you both need to roll two d six. Yep. And then, Calum, I would like for you to roll a dexterity save. I could reaction um, feather fall us. Okay. Don't have to make that. Yeah, if you'd like to use your reaction for that, you're more than well. You're more than able to. Sure. I appreciate it. Well, now the comedy of Corey falling on Calum is lost, and <laughs> my it's night's kinda, ruined. It's kind of serious. <clears throat> uh, if you want to play so badly, let's play. I'm overcharging a true polymorph and turning into a Remoraz. Oh fuck. Okay. Is Featherfall a first level spell? Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's a reaction. Okay, so right. <clears throat> can't Not a like bonus. Can't... If you cast a spell as a bonus action, your next spell can only be a cantrip. All right. So you... I played wizard for three years. <laughs> so you turn into a Remoraz. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Make a bite against the biggin. Okay. Uh, plus 11 to hit. That is a 13. A 13 does not hit. Cool. Oh, wait, I can't even do that because I use polymorph. Right. Yep. All right. So you can Sorry. get up to it. <clears throat> I get up to it. Big intimidating as a bug. Okay. You can give it a nice hug and maybe heat it up a little bit. Nice. Struggle snuggle. Next up, Corey. We cannot hear you. Um, It's fine. Hi, everyone. My name's Corey. But it's not because I'm Wings and I'm playing as Corey and I'm looking at a spell. Um... So he's a Remoraz now. Caleb is, yes. Can I run up his back and attack it from his, from from atop a, a Caleb? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, like it's up to Caleb if he allows you onto his back, which I mean, you can. You're just gonna take some fire damage. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, maybe I shouldn't do that then. Um. Yeah, instead I'm going to run around to the other side of this thing and I'm going to cast Destructive Wave. So I need a Constitution saving throw from it. Okay. So a Constitution saving throw. It fails. All right. Um, it is going to take 15 Thunder Damage. Wow. Sorry, it's just a lot of really low rolls. Okay, well, 15 thunder damage and 8 radiant damage. Um, like, the Gwen is hostile, right? Yes, the Gwen she is also, hostile. And she it got also a, needs to make a constitution saving throw. Okay, it got a nat 20 to maintain the banishment on Gwen. Cool. Uh, fake Gwen got a 12. Uh, well, she will also take that damage. 15 thunder damage and 8 radiant. She pop. Bye. Um, I think that's all I can do for now. Um, as a bonus action, I'm going to use my channel divinity to regain a third level spell slot. Okay. Yeah. Sounds yeah, that's it. Good. Next up, Gwen. Gwen, 
You are in I'm this hungry. place. You are hungry. The sky is red. Everything looks edible. Uh, and in the strangest way possible, you can hear a heartbeat. Oh, sorry. Yes. I, I know that you're doing something. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm a mage slayer. Um, I think that they get disadvantage on um, concentration saves. I think. It might just be from my attacks. Uh, when you damage a creature that is concentrating on a spell, that creature has disadvantage on saving throws it makes to maintain its concentration. It's still good. Okay. Sorry. No. Go on. You're being very scary. That's okay. Spooky. Uh, so, Gwen, there is this heartbeat that you can hear. And it's not coming from your chest, but it seems like it is coming from the world around you. But it has a almost... A particular quality about it that you would expect as if back in the day, way, way back when, when you had those moments where you would have like bits and figments of seeing through Cybra's eyes, where you felt that sort of like animalistic hunger inside of you and the sound of this heartbeat that seems to be coming from everywhere almost has the same tantalizing quality as prey did back when you would look through the eyes of a predator this place this area that you are in it is your prey that hunger wells up with you again. I need you to make a wisdom save while you are here. I'm going to roll a real dice. Let's see. Don't fuck me. Nine. Nine? What does Gwen do? I have do? plus zero, guys. I'm so sorry. Gwen, what do you do while you are here? I'm going to go to town. If I'm hungry, this is my prey. It is I'm like... I'm a barbarian. I am raged. This is like your hand sinks into the earth and pulls it up with the ease of if your fingers were going through like a, a bag of rice. Like when you have that, just like, I'm going to yeah, grab yeah, yeah. that shit. Mm -hmm, Tap mm -hmm. that boy. Make sure it's full. And it is like, in the courtyard as you like as you begin to consume. It is almost like a Krispy Kreme, I would say, mm. where it's like that oh. light, fluffy, but as you eat it, like you unlock that extra hunger where you're like, I gotta eat like six of these uh, motherfuckers if yeah, I'm gonna yeah, feel yeah. anything. Like it is yeah. that coming from just this area around you. Then I believe with a banishment spell, just checking on that real quick. Ba, ba, ba. Yeah, while there, you were just in there until you were freed. A snacky. Yep, you're just snacking away, having a time. Next up in the initiative order, Arjan. I draw my sword. Okay. Uh, question: Whenever Gwyn uh, faded into nothingness, did that did that uh, poke out a seed of fear? I would say that it did. Seeing that like essence get taken into this dark hole like area. Twelve. A twelve. Um, I would say that would add. Uh, that would definitely add some stress. I cast a spell. Okay.
I take two steps forward with the sword and I appear on the other side of it. Uh, once again, pretty close to the Remoraz and Quarry. Uh, I cast Zephyr Strike for, and with my first attack, I'm going to do the anime sword thing. Except I'm, I'm running across. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Natural fucking 20. Whoa. Excellent. Roll for damage. Uh, Zephyr Strike would give me an additional 1d8 on that, but a critted, so... 2d8. This table, we always double the dice, because it's more fun rolling all them math rocks. Okay, so that first attack is going to be um, 25 points of damage. And it is going to have disadvantage on the next save that it makes. Ooh, okay. So 25, half of 25 would be 12. It makes it save. And then Arjan, roll a d100 for me. Fifty-one. Fifty-one. With a fifty-one, a second one of these effigies rattles and falls off to the ground. And similar to like what you saw occur with Gwen, where it created this facsimile puppet, you see a variation of Arjan get created. Arjan, surprisingly, this is not the most horrific version of yourself that you have seen. The blood echo that you had fought earlier, that honestly looked a little bit more gross. Uh, but this version is feral. It is on all fours, wings up, and just seems like it is ready to tear. I spit acid. Dope. So both not me and bigger not anything nice need yep. to make deck saves uh the bigger not nice thing needs to make it a disadvantage okay bigger not nice rolled a six then and then not you got a three nineteen points of acid damage okay the not you continues to be not you as it melts So one thing with Zephyr, Zephyr Strike, that was an that was an additional attack. I still have two attacks. Hell yeah, get it. Uh, I come back up to stab it. Okay. Uh, twenty. Twenty hits. Fourteen points of damage. Okay. Sounds good. And it already had its once per turn nasty ability. Uh, 13. 13. A 13 does not hit. I would like to use Stalker's Flurry. Okay. 15. A 15 still does not hit. Okay. Uh, that is it. Okay. Next up is the Biggin Boy. Uh, the Mr. Not Nice. Um, oh. For the hits that he made. Okay. Um, was it all saves that he was making on your turn had disadvantage? It was the next save that he made before the start of my next turn. Okay, cool. Just wanted to make for, sure for yeah. the purposes of keeping up concentration. Um, he is doing fine. Um, and uh, at least on the concentration end. He does not look great all things considered um let me check here real quick so i need let me 
así. Pa, pa, pa. So I need all three of you to make dexterity saving throws. 25. Success. No. <laughs> okay. I got an eight. All right. Uh, so two failures, one success. So on a failure, uh, as this thing stands here and you are all bashing at it as best you can, you can hear this creaking groaning sound that seems to come from within it that begins to override that childlike desire for play. As you see the series of uh, small glowing critter eyes inside of this thing's chest begin to vibrate. And as they do, they seem to build up an electrical charge until eventually that charge bursts forward, exiting through these rib cages as it casts a chain lightning spell. Oh, it's a spell. Yes, it is. What happens when you spell? <laughs> well, first of all, I have advantage on the save. Okay. Never mind, I just got another eight. That's a fuck me, I guess. Uh, and I'll, second of all, I get to attack it. Okay. Hiya. A 16 to hit? A 16 does not hit. Okay, never mind. So on a fail, it is 50 points of lightning damage. Oh. I'm within five feet of this thing. You are inside of a pocket dimension. Okay, yeah. just kidding. <laughs> good, good, good news, folks. Um... Good news. This is a spell, and I've got things for spells, but I've got things from two different sources for spells. So give me give me a hot second. Okay. Um, I believe everyone in my aura is going to take half damage from this uh, on account of the fact that I'm the Oath of Ancients Paladin again. Yeah, resistance to damage from spells. Excellent. Good news, folks, because otherwise that would have downed me. Do you take damage on a success? On a success, you take half. Okay. So that'd be 25, since we're down to 12. Yes. And then next up is Remoraz Caleb. Cool. Um, I've passed Concentrate. Natural 20 to hit? That hits. Cool. Um... Cool. I'm sorry, give me one second. I just want to double check. Uh, 63 points of piercing damage. Okay. Plus... Eighteen fire damage. 63 and 15, you said? Uh, 18. <clears throat> okay, roll a d100 for me. Cool, it is grappled. Okay. And restrained. 49. 49. So, with the 49, that would be... Your Remoraz colors shift oh? in the same way that Gwen had inverted colors. Yours do as well. But as a Remoraz, it dies spectacularly. Calum, as a Remoraz, what's the chompy look like? What's the, what's the, what's the big <clears throat> bite? Uh, it is a bite whatever Calum thinks is the neck as the Remoraz body coils around this creature. And he just begins to squeeze. Okay. And as you begin to squeeze and tear into this creature, the wood bits begin to break down and collapse in on themselves as the wooded mm, sinewy rib cage that it has begins to crack and break. And as it does, you see those two bits of light beginning to dissipate. As they do, you see these wispies of smoke beginning to exit. 
as you crush this creature fully, Gwen, you are in the process of just nom 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 nom. When you are brought back out of this dimension, that hunger leaves you. But on your hands, you can see that they are just caked in old blood. You have a quite a bit of blood around your mouth from somewhere. It is not yours. I need you to make a constitution save. Other trucker. 22? 22. 20, 27. You can feel that you have consumed quite a bit of something that is not necessarily agreeing with you, but you're able to hold it down like a champ. But you don't think that you're going to be in the mood for, like, hibachi-style barbecue anytime soon. Ah. Uh... What happened? Oh my god! <laughs> Gwen, yeah, Gwen there's just crash. like this giant fucking <laughs> bug like looking down at you. It's Caleb. Uh, it's Caleb. Gwen, your inverted color has returned. Mm -hmm. Inverted color on the Remoraz has also returned. You mean our normal color? Yeah, you've okay. returned. Okay. Oh my god, what the fuck was that fight? Did I attack someone? Do I have any idea what that thing was? Arjun, it, 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 he can't really deal with this right now. Mm -hmm. I thought I was sent, I went to a weird place, guys. I went to a really weird, like, I've been to a lot of weird places. I went to a weird place. Great. Glad we could handle that. I'm surprised, honestly. I thought that was it. I thought that was the end. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Did you not? No. Oh. No. I was... It doesn't fucking matter. Where are we going? Are we going to the fucking castle? God, I forgot what we were doing. Yeah, castle? Corey. What's at the castle? The Corey. Raven Queen. Oh, right. Cory stands up uh, and kind of winces as she uh, grabs her ribs. Um, and she says, I don't think I'm in any state to face another fight like that. We should probably rest. Uh, and she sort of looks back and forth between Gwen and uh, Arjan, recognizing that something weird's going on. Kalen begins to burrow. All right, I guess he's just going to stay like that. <sighs> I've got a Caleb, negative three in, so. Caleb? Hello? And our wizard is a bug and it's gone. Uh, well, at least but... he'll die doing what he loved. I, Gwen, can you cut that out for like two minutes? We're what? still alive. At least for now. You can mourn us when we are dead, but for now. Yeah, if I die last. Which did not happen last time, so. I'm gonna walk in and flicker in the forehead. Ow! Stop it. Sorry. Uh, if I if I go up to the hole, can I see Kalen? Just like ten feet down, he's dismissed the polymorph. <laughs> Why am I in here? Are you done? I mean, I figured while I'm in that form, I might as well make a someplace safe to rest. Okay. Do I believe him? He's beginning to cast Magnificent Mansion. Okay. Uh, all right. So, do we have a plan? Not that it you know, 
Sorry. Do we have a plan? Well, for one thing, we should probably have something to eat that isn't uh, cotton candy and popcorn. Oh, or God, please don't mention those things. Corey pulls the wicker basket off of her back. Uh, she says, I think it's time for tea. We should probably have it inside the mansion. Yeah, she walks over to the burrow. Probably like has to climb up a little bit of dirt to get to it. If I grab my crossbow, um, don't notice anything different. Uh, different than when you dropped it, yes, because it feels like your regular crossbow again. Great. Lights in the courtyard about that. Yeah, so you all are gearing up to spend an evening in Calum's curious cabin. Yeah. Yep. Corey makes tea. Okay. I am designating myself and my party able to go inside. And no one else. That seems like a safe bet. Seems like a mm -hmm. seems like a good time on that one. Um, and as you are, as the cabin is prepared, as you gather your things and are getting ready for to not deal with any of the other shit that's happening outside in the shadow fell. I think that's a good time for us to call it for tonight's session. It seems like a good resting spot. So with that, we did it. Congrats, guys. Yay! You solved my murder meat mystery puzzle. <laughs> God. Hooray! I don't so, want to know where that meat came from. Welcome to the demi plane of hunger. Pray that you do not enter there yet again. So, welcome to the demi plane of Arby's. We've got oh, the meats. <laughs> <laughs> you fool. <laughs> that was Arby himself. <laughs> God damn it. All right. Well, that's our show for the evening. Thanks so much to everybody who decided to stop by. I love having these folks on the channel, even when they're eating kiwis with all the skin on. And speaking of fucking wild and folk who do that kind of thing, RJ, where can we find you? What do you do? Hey, everybody. I'm RJ. You can catch me eating kiwis here every Monday. Um, oh. Also at... <laughs> Or just as 282 on Twitter and Twitch. Write tweet about the nerdy things of my life and sometimes stream with my pals. Uh, otherwise, here, Monday is Caitlin, the Shadow Kai Wizard. Thursdays, we are wrapping up our Elegant Magic's Good Society game with a climactic long game because we got to do some things like go talk to my dragon patron and then go topple my family. And that's a thing. Uh, after that, it's Saturdays back at GGK for Star Power. Finally rounding out the week Sunday over at the Hype Goblins channel where we do a D&D homebrew campaign as well as Sunday night at LB Hackham as a guest. I play a... I play Steven's son. His name is Blitz. My boy. It's Masks. It's at AQNA.com. Hello, everybody. I'm LB Hack'em Up, and I'm running that game on LB Hack'em Up, which you can follow at LB Hack'em Up on the Twitters and the Twitches. We are streaming uh, Tuesday afternoons, uh, Thursday evenings, and Friday evenings. This week, we're going to be playing the Blackout Club uh, tomorrow afternoon with some friends, probably RJ and Savannah. Um, and or if, if somebody else wants to play, uh, and uh, on Friday, uh, actually, we might not be streaming this Friday because I will have a guest in my home. The person who killed me right at the end of a game that I still haven't let that uh, go and might find wet socks. Just kidding. Maybe not. LB, Anyways. if I can eat a kiwi on stream, I can definitely wear wet socks. No problem. Mm hmm. All right. <laughs> but uh anyways <laughs> no don't do it please rj no no oh boy. god oh god you it brought this on socks denaykeeter.com <laughs> boy i'm cyber uh you, you, you can find me on on the twitch and the twitter and and the and the cyber wolf 1201s uh yeah it i i, I also have a youtube YouTube.com slash Cyberwolf 201, where I've been uh, talking about our uh, or my home group's uh, Frozen Sick campaign. Uh, we actually just finished that adventure uh, and are going to continue a little bit later uh, going into like an Isle Cross campaign 
in Exandria using a whole bunch of the Rime of the Frostbite and stuff, which will be fun. Uh, so go go check that out. But for other RPG stuff, uh, I am no longer running uh, Urban Shadows on High Shelf Collective because we just finished that. It was very nice. Uh, but I'm still here on Mondays. That's it. DanaeKeener.com. Speaking of DanaeKeener.com. Hi, everybody. I'm Danae Keener. You can find me at DanaeKeener.com. You can also find me at Danae Keener on Twitter. Uh, I do nerdy drawings, mostly related to D&D &D and a lot of things on this channel. Uh, on Twitter, you can find a pinned tweet with a schedule that says all of the streams that I'm in and all of the stuff that I'm up to. So go and check it out. DanaeKeener.com. And if you've made it this far, you probably already know who I am, but if you don't, hey, Acorns, what's up? It's me, your buddy, your pal, your friend, the Indoor Adventurer, the showrunner here at twitch.tv slash Indoor Adventures. We do shows like this on Monday and Thursday at 5.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time or on Sundays at 7 o'clock p.m. Pacific Standard Time. If this is your first time joining us, you can go to youtube.com slash Indoor Adventures to check up on all of the VODs of each of the games that we have played up until this point, or you can go towards where anywhere audio casts are made available for free. You can find us there under the same moniker. But speaking of things that are being made available for free, we are going to be going into our Patreon-supported after show called Knights in the Courtyard, where we answer questions not only from each other, but also from the community. So if you have any questions for myself or any of these other fine folk, feel free to join us on our Discord. You can find the link in the description of this video or audio cast down below, and we will do our best to respond in kind. So with that, I would like to say once again, thank you to everybody who decided to stop by. Thank you to these players for putting up with my bullshit once again this week, because that was, um, there was some substance in this one today. And as always, we'll see you guys next time. All right, everybody. Bye-bye.